Welcome to the Plumes of Oz where today we're going to look at some of the birds that inhabit the woody grassland areas of Australia. Three birds in particular, the Rufus Songlark, the Brown Songlark and the Tawny Grassbird. To begin with we will look at the Rufus Songlark. This bird is characterised by its red rusty rump. Otherwise it has a pale brown fawn appearance, a common feature of many of the birds that inhabit the grasslands between the lush grass of the coast and the dry grass of the desert areas. If not in grass, it is in a fairly dense scrub, for the rufous songlark spends most of its time foraging on the ground. Well that is until it decides to come out for a preen in the sun. With that rear view, just look at that nice rufous tail. But if you look at the bird from on the front, it may look like many other similar fawn birds. Male and female both have the same appearance, but the female bird is smaller than the male. With these birds, where there's one, there's usually more than one. And you can hear another bird calling from a high perch in the background. They usually do this repetitive call from a high point, but the most interesting thing about the songlarks is that when they take off and fly, their voice goes into a very rapid high frequency call. Sometimes they are so busy calling in flight that they forget to look out for the raptors that can predate on them. In our Australian idiom, we would call this a close call with the black-shouldered kite. But did you hear the call of the bird? It has a razor-type quality. Birdsong comes from the syrinx, and birds that can call like this with a developed syrinx are called osign birds, for they develop a pitch frequency like a sine wave curve. The rufous songlark on the ground is a very cautious bird. When it calls from in a tree, it doesn't mind if you approach. But I was so lucky to get these shots on a hot day at a waterhole. Here is a female, a little bit smaller than the male. And some people think that it has less dark around the front of the eye. I'm sceptical of this and can really only tell a male and a female from the size. The story about the dark in front of the eye came from an illustration in Matthew's books, The Birds of Australia. The illustrator for the Rufus Songlark was Heinrich Grunwald, a brilliant Danish naturalist artist. And in his illustration he has less dark in front of the eye of the female. But I cannot tell any difference in the coloration of the male and the female bird. And even Matthews in his book says that the male and the female are the same. Now the species name is Matthewsy in honour of the same Greg Matthews who wrote the volume volumes The Birds of Australia in the early 1900s. He was a local boy born in the Hunter Valley. Here is another smallish bird, I suspect a female, but this one has a very dark marking in front of the eye. The rufous songlark is insectivorous. When it finds something on the ground with its foraging, it eats it on the ground. I have never seen it take food to a perch. Most birds get along fairly well with one another, but when two insectivorous birds are looking at the same grub and only one can get the meal, there is often a little bit of scowling on behalf of the bird that loses out. As mentioned before, the rufous songlark sings from a perch on a tree, usually high up. When foraging, I have never heard it call, 
But sometimes its mate or a second song lark will call, for it's rare to have one bird by itself. They are usually in a pair. The largest group I have seen is up to seven birds. Sometimes a guess can be made as to the age of the bird. Juvenile birds may have some streaking over the chest, but again, I find this very difficult to evaluate. Well, we are now back to an adult bird, stalking for insects around a pond. The classification of the Australian song larks has undergone change in the last few years. In 2018, Alstrom, a Swedish biologist, studied the superfamily to which the Australian song larks belong. This family is called Sylvioidae. Before 2019, the Australian song larks were in the genera Megalurus. And at the end of this video, I will put up a cladogram of the classification I suspect will soon be adopted from Olstrom's paper. But for many people watching this video, the name Megalurus Matthewsi is still the acceptable common name for the Rufus songlark, but I suspect the genera will be changed to Synchloramphus. The synclo from synclus in Greek for twitching and ramphus for bill. Synchloramphus was first used by Gould to describe the song larks. But as many bird watchers know, the difference between a male brown song lark and the rufous song lark is enormous. And Gould's new genera, Synchloramphus, was applied principally because of the brown song lark, which he thought was the typical example of his new genera. The classification of Australian birds had a real turning in 1827. Vigors and Horsfield applied taxonomic principles to all the specimens in the British Museum and the Linnaean Society. Initially, the songlarks were placed in a genera, Anthus, because of the similarities to the pipits. Then, John Gould placed it in his new genera, Synchloramphus, and then it went back to Megalurus. And now, based on Alstrom's 2018 paper, it has again gone back to Synchloramphus. The brown songlark, Synchloramphus cruralis. Look at those legs. Cruralis, the species name, was given by Vigors and Horsfield. And cruralis is an appropriate name, for it is the description of the tibia. And so this bird has a long leg. But I'm not too sure what Vigors and Horsfield saw. They may have said the long tail looks like a long leg. The only chronological name change for this bird has been from Megalurus to Synchloramphus. There's the female. Look how small she is in comparison. The female brown songlark is just like the rufous songlark without the rufous tail. And there is marked sexual dimorphism with the brown songlark. Later I will show you a cladogram which I have extracted from Sorensen's work. And this will show that the brown and the rufous songlark have different family histories from the genetic studies. As well as difference in the sexes of the brown songlark, 
There is a tonal change in the colour of the male. He becomes quite dark as he goes into breeding mode. The song larks, both the rufous and the brown, live in grassy areas where they hunt for insects. The grass doesn't have to be green. They will just as well thrive in the dry grass of the inland of Australia. So the distribution of these birds is wide. Both song larks do a latitudinal northern migration in winter. Identifying song larks can sometimes be difficult. The ones that cause most confusion are the juvenile or female white-winged triller and the Australasian pipit. The last bird to look at to complete the Sinclair Ramphus of Australia is the tawny grass bird. This usually is found in green grassed areas, in close proximity to water. Again, initially belonging to the genera Megalurus, but now is in the genera Sinclair Ramphus. Other birds belonging to the Megalurus genera, the Spinifex bird and the little grass bird, have now been placed in a new genera called Poodocytes, and we will cover these in a further video. On behalf of Plumes of Oz, I would again like to thank you for watching this video and for further releases of Australian bird videos if you would like to be notified, please subscribe to the channel.